going to 100% failure in 72 hours. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't allow you to do that. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars and often Auto House of Naples, but again, not today. I've got another one from Dave the Wholesaler. And it's a mixed bag. I mean, I'm very happy that Dave was kind enough to allow me to take uh, this car home so I could, you know, experience it and review it. And at the same time, at the same time, anyway, uh, it's a miserable, soupy, muggy, shitty, horrible Florida day, a very suitable day for the last day of 2021. I have to say, of course, it's been a horrible shit year. Uh, I, I don't know if anybody's truly enjoyed this year. None of it went as planned. Much, much worse even than 2020, which was another shit year. So uh, with any luck, uh, 2022 will improve, but I'm not holding out any hope. And uh, it's just the way things are going these days. It really is. It just, it's like... It's like the malaise era all over again, but uh, anyway, I suppose people needed to re-experience that. Uh, the, it, nothing much on the animal front. There was a cat this morning, which looked a bit menacing, but kept to himself. Uh, I think it was the violent cat that Peter has, the one that'll attack you at a moment's notice, but uh, for the most part, it seemed calm, so everything was fine. Uh, there were a couple of rabbits that shot across the road and uh, some other shit, but nothing too unsettling, and birds, I haven't seen a one, so we're in good shape on the animal front. Uh, my sister is still stranded in Ireland with the COVID kid. Uh, I, if you hear chuckling in my voice, you know, <laughs> yeah, and for the record, I wouldn't go get that car in Fort Lauderdale and pick it up out of long-term parking at gunpoint. So, yeah, it's still over there, and that's where it's going to sit until whenever the hell they come back. So uh, don't worry about that in the slightest. That car's going nowhere. And I'm going to look, but yesterday I did that um, I did that Audi, which was outside, and I thought, oh, man, this is going to be a short review. It ends up being like 40-plus minutes. So obviously that's got something to do with all the corona virus whiskey I've been taking lately to keep this uh, Omnicrom thing at uh, bay. Uh, the, maybe I can find a way to sort of tone it down today, although this is a big topic to cover. We're just going to get right into it. Look, this is a 2020, uh, maybe a 21. It's hard to say with this company. Uh, Tesla Model Y long range all wheel drive. Uh, God, what a fitting way to end uh, end this year, I have to say, with a glorified, overhyped, immature toaster oven. I, I mean, absolutely perfect end to the year 2021. Uh, this is the first test I've done. I've been around them. Uh, Peter has a thing for them, so, uh, you know, he always bought them. There were a few at Auto House, but I avoided them. I. It's just a topic that didn't didn't interest me. But, you know, here I have the opportunity to do this one. I haven't done one yet, and I figured, what the hell? Let's just do it. Let's just get it over with, and let's do a Tesla. And uh, so we're going to do that today. Uh, so this is probably the last one I will do as well, because I just don't see the need uh, to, to continue. Uh, it's just not a thing that excites me very much. Uh, the company itself was named for Nikolai Tesla, a famous lunatic who dicked around with electricity in the 19th century. And, uh, you know, it pays homage to him, I guess. Fine, you know, great. I'm sure he was a swell guy, probably didn't treat women or animals badly, but, you know, who knows. Um, it's owned by Elon Musk now, or at least he's the chairman. From what I can tell, it was started by two other guys, you know, back in like 03. And uh, then Musk came in with his PayPal money and basically just drummed him out. Uh, you know, maybe someone will correct me. I'm sure it was all very amicable. Uh, but it looks to me like the two original founding members of Tesla uh, got a kick in the ass and got sent down the road. And now we just have Elon Musk tweeting about it. But I'm not going to get involved in all that. Um, the car is ridiculous. Well, I'm going to say that up front. I mean, 
I, obviously not the style or the design. Well, I, you know, okay, maybe the style a little bit. I mean, to me, it looks like a really fat guy wearing a sperm costume to a Halloween po uh, party or something. But, you know, it looks like every other silly little compact SUV on the market. That, that kind of shit that I don't like. Um, although it is shockingly expensive, so it's got that going for it. But otherwise, it just looks like all the other stuff you see running around. Uh, you know, they say it's an important car. I think Elon Musk said this was going to become the best-selling car of all time. And we'll see. Maybe. Who the hell knows? I can't predict anything anymore. Uh, and it's their newest model. Uh, the newest model from the most valuable car company in the world. I'm <laughs> chewing on that. Uh, way more, it's like more worth more than, you know, BMW and Volkswagen and Mercedes combined. I, it just doesn't make any sense to me at all. I mean, here's this small entry level crossover with the fit and finish of a Bricklin, and uh, it's coming from a company that's got the. Uh, uh, market cap, you know, beyond anything else in the entire world. It just seems bizarre. Uh, but here it is, and, and we're going to jump right into it. Um, so what can I say? Look, let's, okay, very quick, let's get past the technical specs, because that is the least important part of this car, in my opinion. The layout, it's got a lithium-ion battery. Okay, it's got a big giant battery, which is, I believe, bolted to the floor. It's rated at 74 kilowatt hours, uh, or kilowatts per hour. Uh, it's got a one-speed CVT tranny, so I like that, actually. I have to, transmission, sorry. Uh, it's, um, you know, none, none of this eight-speed shit, which, of course, you don't need with an electric car, or it just wouldn't make any sense or isn't even possible. Uh, it's got two engines, dual engines, motors, uh, liquid cooling running between the front and rear wheels, making it essentially an all-wheel drive model. Uh, it's got rack and pinion steering. That's something I can sink my teeth into. Uh, it's got about, three, I, I guess, the equivalent of about 384 horsepower from what I've read. There's a performance version with more, uh, but this one, the uh, long-range all-wheel drive, amounts to about 384, although it feels like much, much more, uh, with torque in the 376 foot-pound range, which, frankly, it also feels like more, so I can't trust any of that shit. Uh, it's all-wheel drive. It's got electronic power steering. I'm sure that's going to keep working. Double wishbone suspension up front. Trailing link stuff in the back, which was robbed from the W124 we covered last week. Uh, Four-wheel discs with ABS. The thing weighs like almost 4,500 pounds empty. And of course, a big part of that is the battery. Batteries weigh a ton. And enemy is the, uh, the weight is the enemy of cars. So, um, you know, hopefully technology catches up someday to make these things. But the thing weighs as much as like a 62 Cadillac. I mean, it's insane. Uh, it's, oh God. <sighs> I always mean to silence that thing and I never do. But uh, that is, look, that's the basic layout of the car. And then, of course, it continues on to be uh, this modern, compact, crossover-looking thing. Uh, it does 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds, which is pretty quick. Uh, it tops out at 135, which is probably limited. And, uh, again, it's priced at, like, 65 grand, which is an absolute shit ton of money. Uh, now, you know, because I haven't done one of these things, I talked to my friend in life. I've brought him up before. When I did a toy go to Prius a couple years ago. Uh, he's a bit of a Prius geek. You know, he says those things cost like a million dollar per unit. Toyota's losing money. I, you know, he's you have to understand life. He's also a guy that gets really happy when you correct his name. You know, like you'll say his name is Life and people will say, oh, you mean Leaf. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, I mean, Leaf. Like, you know, let's go have a Budweiser or a Heineken or a Heineken, he tells them. Uh, you know, anyway, look, I'm not going to get involved in that. I took a few quick notes from what Life told me, and, and take them as you will, because I'm not standing by them. He's a bit of a strange cat. But he says these cars run on coal. They have the carbon footprint of 51 Escalades. Uh, there's a bunch of dead Chinese kids for mining lithium. Uh, you've got tax dollars subsidized douchebags, a bunch of dead firemen, and the fit and finish of a Yugo. Uh, so apparently life is not a fan. Uh, it's something also about $11 billion in taxes, but I didn't get all of that. Um, I did get a tour and a demo of this model from one of the snowflakes at work. 
I have to admit that when I, you know, looked at it and I got in it and it was all mystifying to me, I went and sought her out and she very kindly came to, uh, to show me some of the features on the car. But the probably, you know, like when I, you know, after doing that, which I was very appreciative, she apparently set it up to make farting noises every time you'd hit the turn signal. So the whole way home, the thing is making farting noises at me. Incredibly immature and juvenile. And frankly, there's hope for that one. So, yeah, it is what it is. But, um, God, we'll get into all of that as we go. So look, I'm going to really quick finish up the exterior of this thing because it's going to take ages once we're inside the car, and I don't want this to be like a three-hour video. Uh, I already had the light show going this morning and some other shit happening that's going to be at the front of this video, so I, I just don't want it to run too long. Uh, you can see the styling. I mean, it's got no grill. Well, not really. It's got one at the bottom. Uh, I guess the motors are liquid-cooled. I'm not sure it needs intense airflow. You've got that Tesla logo, which looks like a little dagger on the front of the hood. You've got headlights, which are probably off some other car because little car companies like this can't always afford to make their own headlights. Uh, you've got um, a swoopy curved roof line with a glass or plexiglass top that's heavily tinted. You've got you know, big, I don't know, what the hell, wheels, 19, 20-inch wheels down the side. I mean, what can you say about it? It looks like, I mean, it could be some sort of Hyundai Elantra crossover if they had one. And it just doesn't really do anything for me. You've also got these sort of incomprehensible door handles. Uh, there you see the dual motor badge on the back. You've got a hatch. I guess that was the big thing about this Model Y, is that it's basically the Model 3 sedan, uh, except taller and roomier, so you can get more shit inside of it. So I guess that makes it like a BMW X3 or something, or whatever passes for one now. Maybe an X1. And uh, there it is. So, I mean, it's a very simple-looking thing outside and who would believe it's the most technologically important car in world history or you know whatever it is these tesla fan people call it so i'm gonna pause right there for a minute get my shit together collect my thoughts try and have a little maybe i'm gonna have a uh, Snickers bar or something to cut down the whiskey buzz and uh, then we're going to just jump inside and, and go from there. For, I, look man, I needed the whiskey on this one. I really really did. So uh, forgive me if this is a rambling erstwhile review running all over the place. I just can't help it because it's just not what I had in mind at all. So anyway, bear with me. We'll be back in a second. All right, so let's just get into this thing and get it over with. We're going to start inside the hatch. Uh, like any Mercedes, there's a little pinchy pinch there that lifts up. And, you know, this is apparently the point of this uh, Model Y, that you have all of this room inside. You can fold down the rear seats. You can, you know, get your toddlers and infants in the back. And, and there is a mode for them, by the way, which we'll get into in a minute. But, um, eh, you know, everything looks fine. It's a hatch. It's what it should be. Uh, Yesterday, when I brought it home, I had like 30% charge, so I plugged it in. Uh, it's got a 110 volt setup in, inside that Tesla bag. Uh, apparently, it takes like one month to charge at 110 volts, so uh, I think I got like an extra 10% overnight, but that was it. Uh, apparently, you have to go to one of these tax subsidized supercharging stations uh, in order to uh, actually fill the thing up with uh, coal juice to make it worthwhile. Uh, you close the hatch just like you would anything else and there it is uh, the door handles I find to be a little bit ridiculous uh, you know they're flush that's great for aerodynamics you know it's great that it's doing all of these things that electric cars need aerodynamics and regenerative braking and you know but then you turn on your light show <laughs> I mean it just doesn't make any sense but have a look inside the trunk and then we'll get into what's going on in here all right. They borrowed Frunk from Porsche, of course. That's something the Porsche enthusiasts have been using for years. And uh, here it is. So I imagine there's an electric motor underneath that. So it's probably going to heat up whatever you put in here. If it's you know children, they're going to be pretty warm. Uh, from what I understand, it gets kind of wet in here. The ceiling isn't terrific, so probably not a good place to you know stick your sticks of dynamite or gunpowder or even your AR rifles, anything that you don't want to get too wet, you probably shouldn't put in here. From what I understand, I haven't experienced that myself, but uh, otherwise, there it is. You got a frunk. 
what else can you say? And we're just going to put that right back down. Uh, back seats, you know, same crazy door handles, not entirely easy to use. Your Canadians, they're going to be chipper enough. You can fit three of them across. Uh, I don't know if this is leather or vinyl or what it is. I mean, if it's leather, it's been cunningly designed to feel cheap. And if it's vinyl, it feels a little more expensive than it should. So uh, it's either a kudos or a knockdown, depending on what it is. Uh, you do have some sort of a almost hard to pull out center console there where you get a couple of cup holders, you got some headrests. Um, you do have some pockets here, so there is some gun storage in the back and uh, these all weather mats to, you know, keep everyone chipper. Uh, the door panels, I can't say this is befitting of a $65,000 car. I mean, honestly, this has the build quality of a Pontiac Aztec or something. Uh, I mean, it's got what feels like pretty cheap plastic up here. You've got the prerequisite Alcantara inserts. You've got your window switches and door openers, which feel a little bit like they're out of a Mercedes, because they probably are. It's, you know, companies like this, like Rolls-Royce or Lotus, they always borrow parts from other cars because it's too expensive to develop them. And uh, I imagine Tesla is probably the same, despite their trillion dollar market cap. <laughs> trillion dollars. Uh, I get what people are saying about the fit and finish. Uh, this side actually isn't this bad, uh, that bad. The panel gaps seem all right and a little bit edged out there. But when I went over to the other side, I couldn't help but notice uh, this rear door, uh, it sticks out further than the quarter panel, doesn't quite line up. Same with the front door. Uh, you know, you can see you've got a little bit of an edge out here. I mean, of course, things never been hit. It's just the, you know, this is one of the hardest things for car companies to do is get good panel fits. And I suppose Tesla's doing a pretty good job for a, you know, company the size of Brickland, but eh, they got some way to go. Uh, now, this is ridiculous, okay? Apparently, this, I had to look it up last night because I, this is what was handed to me as the key to this car. And I'm like, what is this thing, a Motel 6? I mean, you got to be kidding me. How the hell is this a key? And uh, apparently your phone is the key, but you have to download the Tesla app and <sighs> register and whatever. So I'm just using these, but apparently these are the backup key cards uh, that will work as a key. You can lock it by sticking it here. You know it's locked when the mirrors fold in. And uh, then you can open it back up by pressing there. All right, front seat, again, pretty friggin' Spartan, you know? I'm not even going to get into the dash yet. Same deal on the door panels. You got more window switches here, door opening button, little map pockety drink holder thing on the side. Lots of cheap looking Pontiac Aztec plastic. It just doesn't, again, 65 grand? <laughs> There's an awful lot of cars you can get for that that probably feel a ton more luxurious, but, you know, they probably don't have a light show or Spotify, so... All right, your seats adjust here. You've got little power adjustments on the side. There's no massage, as I was sad to find out. And uh, now we've got this. All right, so I'm looking straight ahead. Where the hell is the instrument cluster? Where is it? I mean, give me a speedometer, man. Give me something. I mean, I get we're in the modern era and... But I mean, I just feel like this is so gratuitous. Instead of an instrument cluster, you have this giant iPod in the center, uh, which um, which apparently controls everything. So to get it going, you take your key card and you tap it here. And like that. Okay, so now you've got to put the brake on. It's telling me to put my seatbelt on, which I will. <clears throat> And now we're going to start getting into this. And this is what I know is going to be time consuming. So uh, let's just do this as quick as we can. Uh, I'm going to go over to pedals and steering. So you can set these things up. Let's see. So steering mode, sport, comfort, stopping mode, creep. You know, the electric cars have this regenerative thing where the brakes will actually recharge the battery when you let off them. And uh, they, you can get Tesla is smart enough to make it. Uh, Predictable. So, look, you can make it creep, which is, 
going to feel exactly like a normal car. When you let off the brake, it's going to move forward and, uh, you know, it's going to regenerate a little bit, but not much. You can put it on hold, which when you take your foot off the brake, it's going to feel like you applied brakes or when you take your foot off the gas, sorry. And uh, roll, I presume, is actually what it feels like a normal car or maybe it just feels there's no regeneration at all. So, yeah, you know, it is what it is. You've got comfort standard. Uh, acceleration, you've got chill, because I mean, the thing is fast. I, I mean, uh, by virtue of electric motors, they, they they are extremely torquey and fast, so you can easily, very quickly, you know, find yourself in trouble. So if you're running afoul of the law, put it on chill, and uh, that's not going to let you accelerate like crazy. Uh, you can fold the mirrors, you can open your glove box. Uh, let's see them. You're steering. Okay, so I had to learn this last night. So here's the steering wheel. If you want to adjust it, you use this little guy here. Move it to the left, the button it comes out, it telescopes. To the right, it goes in. Roll up to tilt up, roll. You know, this all feels like it's not going to work for very long, but it is working for the moment. And then you can set it where you want it. Uh, let's save. And then you can get into um, uh, the mirrors work the same way. Uh, where the hell are they? Yeah, hit mirrors. And then you can use this button again to adjust your mirror. So, yeah, all very posh and swanky. Uh, and, you know, frankly, okay, that is adult. That is adult stuff. People need to adjust their mirrors. Uh, this is also you get into your glove box, where I did find a window sticker, which is a long reach over here. And so here we go. Uh, Tesla Model Y long range, and uh, you can see it. There. Oh, it was 50. Okay, so it wasn't 65 grand. I got that one wrong. My apologies to everyone. Uh, the car was 51 grand, although it's probably selling for 10 grand over sticker because nobody can get them. So, uh, but anyway, there. I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, let's go over into climate for a minute. So this was interesting. No, that's not climate. That's vehicle. Okay, so here's climate. You move this up. Now, how the hell do I do this? As I did this earlier, oh yeah, here's the, look, you see these little swoopy ghost looking things? You can sweep them down, and apparently this is controlling the vents and the way they shoot out. So now I've got it shooting straight out uh, over, and I can feel it. It is moving around. I just don't know how long it's going to last. And you can do the same over here. So that's how you dick around with your climate on this thing. And uh, your heated seats, there they are. Uh, this is interesting. So in the rear, let me turn that shit off. It's not cold today. In the rear, there are no rear seat uh, controls. So let's say you have your Canadians back there and you want to give them a toaster ass. Well, you can. If one's acting up, being annoying, it's hot out, the last thing he's going to want is a heated seat. So you can fry those bastards. Put all three on bright red and they're going to be crying in no time at all. And uh, I do appreciate that. And obviously, there's no way to turn them off. So they got that going for them. Uh, there, there was the climate. We already did that. You get into your telephone. We got that there. There's a map. We are streaming. This is, I mean, this is why I needed the snowflake. Here's the, uh, the dash cam view, which records all of that crap. Uh, okay, now here's the toy box. No, this isn't the, sorry, this is the main app screen. <sighs> get the defrost on for a minute. Apparently this thing uses a heat pump instead of a uh, standard uh, toaster elements, uh, which is better for whatever reason, but we'll get into that. Maybe we won't get into that. Uh, anyway, you can look, here's your dash cam, here's your energy setting. You can see how I'm all over the map on this one. Don't have any idea what any of that means. Uh, you can get into your calendar, but I think I need to put in the phone for that, your messages. Uh, theater, this was great, okay, uh, YouTube. Well, actually, I tell you what, I'm going to do that with the browser setting, but, you know, I, I thought, wow, it's great, they're giving, oh, you can watch now. Well, first of all, you can't watch it while you're driving, so you got that going against you. Uh, number two, it's smoke and mirrors, man. I mean, uh, this is what you're supposed to do while you're sitting at a charging station. You know, other guys have gas up and gone. They're just gone. You're sitting there at the charging station watching Tickety Talk, and uh, you have to keep that in mind. Oh, that's too loud. All right, we'll come back to all that later. Uh, all right, look, let's get over into uh, the arcade. Okay. <laughs> I 
driving look man i see these 60 70 80 year old guys driving teslas around uh, looking like they're hipsters and cool and staying with the trends well i mean what are they playing sonic the friggin hedgehog at the traffic lights or i guess they're doing sudoku or solitaire uh, i can appreciate that it has asteroids i will say that there probably is a cream for that. Let's play that for a minute. So we've got asteroids going. And the one snowflake, she had no idea what this was. She'd never seen anything like it. And she thought it was pretty cool. Oh, shit. I'm oh, no, man. Can, yeah, you see, it's just like when I played back in the day. Let's see if I can do anything here. All right, now I'm moving around. Hang on. Hang on. All right, there we go. Shit. All right. Yeah, well, anyway, look, all of this is meant to distract you from the fact that you're sitting at a friggin' charging station, so I'd like to put that in mind. But anyway, there's your there's your arcade setup. Uh, let's go the toy box. And this is where things get absolutely ludicrous. So I'm going to put the window down. So this is where she screwed me yesterday. So here's... Okay, I'm going to replace the horns, so and now it won't make a horn sound. Instead, it's going to make whatever sound. We've got La Cucaracha. I did this when I came home. Now, I have to admit I enjoyed that because I felt like I was in a lowered 58 Impala. Uh, you can also make fart noises, which is what she did to me. I, I, I mean, how immature is this in your $51,000 car? I mean, are you kidding me? And here's the hugest insult. Goats. First of all, that doesn't sound anything like a friggin' goat, or at least none of the ones that were here. And it just seems absolutely ridiculous. Uh, you can make driving sounds, which is interesting. So I turn that on. And now when I drive forward, it's going to give me this little... Oh, I have to tap the fucking key card. Okay, so I tapped it. It should give me a theme music. Yeah, there it is. So that's my theme music. That's going to come up every time I drive. Let's turn that shit off. Uh, you've got a megaphone setting. Why well, can't I have to do that? And all right. Testing, testing. I don't know why it sounds like you're, you know, the dying Hell 2000 and 2001, but it does. Daisy, Daisy. Daisy. Yeah, anyway, so you've got that going for you. Turn that shit off. And uh, then we get into what we get boombox. That is boombox. So we get it. Okay, okay, so what about this? Fart on demand. This is in the. Man, God help us all if this becomes mainstream. If you get in an S550 two or three years from now and it has a fart on demand screen. <laughs> You know, when you take the the, the head uh, ambassador from Ghana on a trip, are you going to put a whoopee cushion on, on his seating position? Oh, the ambassador from Ghana is, is letting loose. Smells like cheese and onions. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. And I didn't know this. So this is where she had done this. She had done the fart on the turn signal thing. So every time I hit the turn signal, that happened. And it was incredibly humiliating. <sighs> this is interesting. Okay, so you've got tracks. This is, um, as a guy who used to make electronic music, I have to say that I found this a little bit fascinating. And again, all designed to keep you entertained while you're waiting for your car to charge. Other people have just gassed up and gone. Uh, but you're waiting for a charge. So but anyway, let's, okay, so we're going to do this. We're going to hit play. We're going to get... 808 kick drum going here. And right, let's get some hi hats.
show. So you can sit there dicking around with uh, making music as you're waiting for your car to charge. Uh, I will admit to enjoying that, but at the same time, give me a break. All right, romance. This I could have used back in the day. This would have been nice. Uh, so you're sitting there at your favorite little parking spot near the beach, hoping the police don't show up to break things up. And uh, you've got a fireplace crack. Where the hell is it? Where is it? It's not on the screen. It could, where's the damn fireplace? Not even showing up. Oh, there it is. And then if you tap the thing, you get some kind of sexy music. How the hell is that sexy music? Alright, immediately stop that. Immediately. Um, all right, sketch pad. What do we got? I think I can do this. All right, let's sketch something out. Uh, that you know, this is pretty straightforward. So, uh, you know, for what? For what possible reason? Uh, you clear that. You know, it just, it's so juvenile and so immature. I, I get it, there's some fun to it, but for the love of God. And Rainbow Road and Santa and Mars. I mean, look, I'm not even gonna get into that crap. Uh, if you wanna control the car, you can go over to this setting. This gives you a, a bunch of different, everything has to be through this iPod, everything. I mean, even your speedometer, you're looking straight ahead. You might as well be in a farm tractor. It has nothing. And uh, then when you're driving, all this shit shows up over here. Uh, it's just infuriating to me. Uh, we have safety. Gear in the steering column, lights. <sighs> Let's go back into this toy box thing. Let's see what else we got. Uh, browser, Spotify. Let's go into the browser for a minute. So again, while you're sitting there waiting for a charge, uh, I will say I enjoyed this because I was able to pull up Wang and Midnight. And I could just sit there and that would actually make me happy. While I'm sitting there charging, it would be pretty fun and easy for me to watch that. So let's see. Yeah, full movie on YouTube. All right, let's see what we got. Apparently, it's got some sort of premium connection going, uh, which you pay 10 bucks a month for. It's a Tesla internet connection where they watch everything that's going on and make sure you're not up to no good or having incorrect wrong think. All right, this is great. Huh? Let's see we get some driving scenes going. Here we go. There's one of the Chinese supermodels here. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. There's Blackbird. Come on, look at him. This is not Devil Z yet. Ah, there's a race. Women are screaming. See, this is the kind of shit I can sink my teeth into. Oh, yeah, he's suave. You're going to nail it. Come on, nail it. Oh, there's something weird going on there. Bam! Downshift. Love it. All right. So, I mean, I could just sit here and watch this movie for a while, and then this would be a very different video altogether. Here it is. Here's the Devil Z now. Oh, Blackbird and Devil Z coming to a head. Oh, and that's the dead guy. All right, look, man, I'm going to end there because I could just get too wrapped up in that. Uh, but, I got, look, you've got this endless variety of shit to make millennials and, and Generation Z depressed people happy for at least a moment. They can do karaoke. They can even have a radio, actually. I don't know if they know how to use that. Uh, you know, Tesla should put in a rotary phone setting. Oh, God. Goes with that cucaracha sound. So anyway, look, there it is. I'm not going to keep going. I'll give you this real quick. You got a rear view mirror. Uh, you got weird, weird cocaine mirrors up here. Someone asked in the comments why these are cocaine mirrors. You couldn't, you know, snort. What is it? How cheap is that? 
How cheap is that little thing? Uh, they said you couldn't snort cocaine off a, you know, vertical surface. And they're not wrong, but you could certainly check your nose after your lunch break. Um, you've got this giant, heavily tinted pano roof that Dalton didn't bother to clean very well. And uh, otherwise, everything looking snazzy. So I'm going to pause it there. I think I've done, you know, you've got these compartments. You open this up, and there's this thing here, which maybe it charges a phone. Maybe it doesn't. It's obviously beyond my technology. If you try to push this down too hard, it doesn't work. And at some point, a little thing comes up that chides you that you're doing it too hard. You've got another thing here where there's some breath mints, which I could probably use. Oh, for the love of God. I don't know why they make it where you have to have a certain touch to do that, but they do. You've got cup holders, you've got a little compartment here for a 9mm that there's a couple license plate screws in there, and you probably fit a bigger gun down under there, so uh, they're not um, they're not skimping on gun storage, I'll give them that. But we're going to pause it there, and then we're going to come back and uh, go for a drive. And I do, again, apologize for the tedium of all of that, but... <sighs> There's one thing I want to cover that I forgot to do while I was doing the main thing, and we need to do that before we go. And uh, that is uh, the only feature of this car that I genuinely, truly appreciate. And uh, that is the uh, child mode, uh, which I think is an actual brilliant thing that they've done. And you can see that over here. For some reason, they call it dog. But let's say that you have your child strapped in in the back somewhere, you know, bungee corded in the trunk, uh, whatever else, you know, you, and you got to run it. You got to do something. You know, you got to run into a store, you got to go get a massage, whatever it is you need to do. And you can't really bring the thing with you, you know? I mean, there's nothing ruins a good massage like a toddler hanging around. So you put it in this uh, child mode, which I, th I just want to make sure we're still in it. We are. And then you can get out of the car. Because look, man, once you have a kid in the car, there's always some sanctimonious Sally or Budinsky who wants to wreck your day. It's like, oh, it could be hot in there. Oh, the child's in danger and uh, Tesla has very cleverly done this so you can leave the child in uh, you can get out and look at that there's the screen uh, my driver will be back soon don't worry the AC is on and it's 69 degrees now apparently that'll keep going until the battery gets down to a certain level and uh, at that point it's gonna alert you by phone you may be in the middle of a massage hopefully you're not hopefully you're nearly done and you can get back before the battery dies uh, but otherwise your kids are gonna be fine so I mean even if it's really hot or really cold outside uh, Tesla has very very thoughtfully given you this feature uh, to be able to um, uh, to keep the kids okay and to keep those negative Nancy's away and uh, I can really appreciate that so I just wanted to jam that little feature in before we kept going with the test drive all right well, look let's just go for a drive I've got to tap the key card again again I mean talk about motel 6 but I guess it's fine once you have your phone set up it probably makes more sense here's the navigation screen that comes i mean this is obviously enormous and um yeah whatever all right let's just go for a drive so i press that down you get no engine noise of course because you're in an electric car it would be you know all of these friggin apps all right everywhere everywhere you got asteroids on this stupid thing how about piping in some v8 sound you know i want an nhra setting or a lamborghini countach setting to at least give me a inkling that i'm driving something that has a soul to it i really really do for Peter's Gate. And then you can see I let off the gas and the thing comes to an almost instant stop. And I think it actually applies the brake lights, which is clever and needless. You could just hit your own friggin' brakes if you wanted to. Uh, I've been trying to get autopilot to work, but I haven't been on a highway. So I have the feeling with all the weird lawsuits and other shit going on with that, they've now relegated that feature just to highways. And uh, we'll give it a shot on the ride to... Uh, to work on I-75. We'll see if it works there, but it hasn't worked for me yet. And uh, I think that could be the lawyers at work. <laughs> Away we go. Um, ah! 
Okay, I mean, see, the thing is screaming fast. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But it's cheating. I mean, it's just a big electric motor. I mean, in their natural state, let's just say you have a raw electric motor and a 9-volt battery, and you connect it. There's no spool up. I mean, basically, an electric motor is even, it's either on or off. So the minute, it's easy to make this thing powerful by virtue of just what it is. So, uh, you know, if electric motors didn't have that intrinsic quality, then this whole ludicrous speed and plaid speed and all that other shit stuff uh, would not be a big selling feature in Teslas. And uh, a lot of those old white-haired guys, or the only guys who have money for these things, by the way, you know, probably would be back to buying their Audis and Mercedes-Benz, so. And uh, honestly, man, I mean, some silver-haired gent on his way to the country club, what's he gonna turn on the fart noises with the... <sighs> like we're gonna turn on the fart noises. Why the hell not? Let's do that right now. Oh, you have to be stopped. Of course you do. Safety first. Toy box, let's see. Emissions. Yeah, okay, fart on demand. The hell with that. I'm gonna enjoy that while we can. Mm. Yeah, this is your $51,000 Tesla, the most important car in the history of mankind, the highest market cap of any automotive company ever, the fifth largest company in the United States, and it'll fart when you hit the volume button. It doesn't, I, you know, they say that the Model 3 handles very well and that this one is a little more sketchy. I mean, I believe it. You've got 4,500 pounds to throw around, so it's not, um, it's not at all what I would call light. It certainly isn't, uh, uh, following Colin Chapman's, you know, ad lightness formula that he took Lotus with, so... <sighs> It's heavy. You've got a big electric battery on the floor. Uh, my friend Penelope, who knows somebody who's in the insurance business, uh, said there's some issue with those floor batteries because they have this real light uh, coating of aluminum on them that's susceptible to road hazards. And if you run over one, it infringes on the battery and, uh, and can cause thousands and tens of thousands of dollars in damage. I don't know if that's true or not. That's, you know, it's just what I hear. Um, but uh, apparently some insurance companies are kind of troubled over that and may and may not keep insuring uh, certain Teslas. So, yeah, who the hell knows? Uh, instant torque. I will say that. I mean, look at this. There's another one straight ahead of us. All of a sudden, they're everywhere. God, now we look like the Guatemalan Secret Service. I should get right on its bumper, and we could drive as two white Tesla Model Ys to, you know, wherever the hell it is that we're going. I have this horrible feeling these things are going to be everywhere at some point, and it's just the end of the beautiful, naturally aspirated internal combustion engine. I mean, imagine a race of Teslas where you're sitting in the grandstands. It's absolute silence. You can hear a pin drop and these things are flying around the track. I mean, you want to talk about boring, drag racing with no sound, automotive racing, road racing with no sound. Ah. God, thank God I'm getting old. I'm telling you, I just don't fit into this future at all. <sighs> well, anyway, look, I'm not going to keep going. I can yeah, see that. Look, this is interesting. So as you're driving along, it... Uh, wow, somebody just flew in front of me there, according to the thing. I, yeah, this doesn't seem very spot on to me at all. Let's get around this truck. My shit's rolling around in the back. <laughs> it is fast, I'll give it that. But it does not like the way I drive. It keeps giving me this yellow warning signs when I get too close to the edges and such. Yeah, the hell with it. Look, anyway, so here it is. I'm, I'm going to finish because this is obviously already a probably long video, which I apologize for. I, I never claimed it was going to be short, this one. So um, it's the last video of the year. 
I, I can't thank everybody enough for making 2021 a terrific year for me on YouTube. I hit 100,000 subscribers, which is a miracle. And uh, it just blows me away to see people tuning in and watching the videos. That It is honestly, honestly the only thing that keeps me going in this business anymore. Otherwise, I'd be happy to go work at Sunshine Hardware, be the plumbing guy or something. Eh, hey, what do you need there? What do you have a half inch pipe? You need some half inch pipe? That'd be good for me. So um, otherwise, take this away and that's where I'm at. Thank you again. I appreciate it. You guys mean a lot. The comments mean a lot. And uh, thank you for watching this ridiculous review, the, any of you that hung in there. And uh, we're going to see you with some new stuff in the new year. Uh, take care and uh, have a terrific uh, new year and a you know, great start to the next one. Bye-bye.